I think of Acts 17, 26 through 29, and it's like, it's not random or by chance mm-hmm. that you live in the geographical areas that you live in or the times that you exist in. And so for me, just on a practical level, like I'll circle back to like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to be in a minivan mm-hmm. with my kids. And it's like, <laughs> how can I, um, when I am annoyed and when I do want to lose it, how can I be um, constrained and held accountable by the Holy Spirit so that it hopefully is going to create an echo in their heart so that when they grow up to be husbands, fathers, um, wa- a wife, MJ, um, uh, a mom, like that, that is an echo in their hearts for when they're going to have that same moment with their kids, you know? And they're like, oh yeah, I remember when dad, like I, I did the same stuff and this is how dad responded. And so for me, it's just like very practical. And I think again, I think momentarily, immediately, and I think what often God's trying to do to us is help us to see eternally or even generationally. Um, and so that, from a practical level, has helped me just tomorrow when yeah. I'm going to prep to go <laughs> on vacation or yeah. a trip. My kids go on vacation. There you go. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah. I think that's really good. I, as I'm thinking about, I'm. Tra- I think my brain can get lost of a thirty thousand foot. Even part of this question of just making this like. It's a really big question to think about. But I think right now, I think where God has me on assignment is I'm going to just answer kind of outside of my job, kind of like you did, Joel. But I have a lot of friends that are in a season of either having their most of them are having their first child. And so I think God has placed me in a unique position to have um, the white space to be able to come alongside them and support them in a way that if I had children of my own right now, I wouldn't be able to do that. And so thinking about, I have friends that are, you know, due in July and August and September and even my own sister um, this fall. And so really just leaning into the white space that God's given me to be like a support role for them in that, whether that's like getting their grocery order when I'm going to the grocery store or just kind of checking in in those like first couple of months when, you know, it's it's a lot and not just checking in on um, the baby, but also checking in on the mom. And so that was just one thing that came to mind for me of, of where I feel like God's asking me to step into that space. Yeah. Yeah. I love both of those because they're so like specific and practical to like where both of y'all are like life stage wise mm-hmm. like your roles and your families and your communities and um yeah as i think about this question i i kind of feel like i'm at like a life stage where i'm sort of on the precipice of like i don't quite know like i feel like i have been on assignment you know and i have like been you know cultivating growing building in the areas that the lord has called me in and those like that season is like finished and I'm kind of standing on the edge. I'm like, okay, Lord, what next? What's next? Yeah. You know, like, where are you, where are you wanting me to show up? Mm -hmm. Um, And so I kind of feel like I'm talking to the Lord about those questions. I was just reading in Joshua this morning and um, the uh, Bible that I'm reading, there's like some devotional questions and it's just asking like, where, you know, is the Lord like the center of your life and what does that look like? Mm -hmm. Um, Because it's talking about like dividing up the tribes of, um, Israel and all that, um, and, uh, geographically. And, um, and so I'm just kind of on the edge of like, okay, I don't really know what's next, but like, I'm talking to the Lord about that. So I feel like this is a very good, like timely, uh, podcast for us to talk through. Yeah. And for me, that's great. Yeah. Is there anything that we didn't say that you guys want to share before we wrap up on this conversation of, exile new heavens new earth i mean we always talked about eat it i mean i think we kind of like low-key whole, covered the whole did, whole story didn't the we? whole story of scripture yeah and, we did uh, one podcast episode i would just uh even you know here in your victoria that you say that um i think patience mm-hmm. is such a massive component in it um and i think we live in a society where either we have this urgency to get to the next thing mm-hmm. and we almost um become a bit careless and reckless because we just want to do the next thing or the pendulum swing is we are so stressed out about the potential and possibility that when we do know it's the time to make the move we still wait Mm -hmm. you know because of a fear of what might happen and and i think one of the things that is so helpful like with the context of exile and all the things we've been talking about the vocation and calling is um patience is only as powerful as what we are actually practicing 
while we're being patient. Mm-hmm. You know, and I heard a couple of things that you said, you know, like you're waiting on the Lord, you're talking to him. You've, mm-hmm. I know you, you know, outside of the podcast episode and just like as friends and coworkers, you've got a strong community, you're involved in your church and all of those things are the things that you practice in the midst of that patience so that uh, when God says, all right, let's take the first step, you're like, all right, I'm going to be obedient to take that step. Um, and so like the exile is meaningful. Mm-hmm. Exile has purpose. God is actually um, cultivating and creating in us something of extreme importance and worth because that thing will actually transition and flow into eternity. 